All right, here we go, guys. And first and foremost, a happy and healthy 2022 slash beginning of 2023 holiday season to everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Just happy holidays to folks who are agnostic and a happy and joyous and healthy new year to everyone. And you'll you'll see some running clips here, a, a, a shorts I did that I never published of four double digits in August in Block Island. And as many of you know, I am a part-time charter captain. I do have a full-time job. And the reason that's important, I'll talk about more towards the end of this video. But an annual tradition for me is, is not necessarily drinking eggnog by the fire, but publishing, uh, this is the third time I'm doing it, a summary of how my fishing season went specifically from a charter boat captain perspective. And we will dive right into that now. So without further ado, let's uh, let's stop showing the fishing shots and go right to the spreadsheet. All right. So here's the spreadsheet, the 2022 general ledger. And uh, right off the bat, let's just look at how we did. Without further ado, you see expenses of about 26,600 and change. Income of 34,700 and change. Hey, that's a $5,000 profit, which is the most I've ever done. Um, we'll, we'll caveat that slightly. It, you'll see that my winterization bill is not here yet, and that's because I am getting the fuel tanks replaced. So I expect a big bill in early 2023 that will not only capture all the work that my local boatyard is doing on the boat, the 32 CV, but also the cost of the winterization, the, you know, the changing the oils and uh, fogging the, the, the engine and all that good stuff that has to occur at winterization and storing the boat for the winter. But let's, let's dive closer first at the expenses. And when you think about owning a boat and obviously a charter business, uh, there's two types of expenses. There's the fixed expense, things that you have to pay that can't change things like the dock fee, insurance, things like that. And then the variable expenses, things like gas um, that you have somewhat control over. If you don't use the boat, hey, you're not going to incur gas fees or gas bills. Uh, so that 26600 included 7250 in dock fees for 2022. Uh, that's what my landlord charged me. And that's actually in line with what the big marinas are charging local to me in Eastern Long Island. My boat is located in Greenport on the North Fork of Long Island. I'm at a private dock and I don't get a lot of the amenities that you would at a marina, but it's easy access to Peconic Bay, fairly short run to really good fishing like Plum Gut, The Race, um, Fisher's Island, and, and a slightly longer run, about 30 miles to Montauk, 30, uh, 45 miles to Block Island, but, but, big but, um, the reason my gas fees are going to be so big is because I have a relatively fast boat, a 32 CV, twin 350 Verados, Merc Verados, cruise is typically 35 to 38, I can push it higher, but then the gas bill goes higher, um, so those places are far, but they're not that far when you consider the speed, so that was the, the big fist, fixed cost fee, 7,250. Um, from a, the next big fee, obviously, is the insurance. It's commercial insurance. I have a decent liability on it. I want to, you know, protect myself. God forbid anything bad happens. That was slightly over 2000, 2091. Spring commissioning, 2700. Um, it, mixed in with the insurance I got, I have obviously the Towboat US. You can get Sea Tow or Towboat US. I have, I have Towboat US, 115 bucks. Um, Boat registration, that's a fixed expense. Uh, every three years, I believe, in New York, that was $93 this year, maybe every four years, apologies. I got to be in a drug testing program, that cost me $70. Um, and 100 hour service, I'm counting that as a fixed expense because the amount of time I used the boat, I'm going to go over 100 hours. That was almost $1,000. Um, now, the variables, and there's one big one it's gas. Uh, and you, you'll see a lot of gas expenses here. And over to the right, uh, I tallied it all up, slightly over 14000 And let me just qualify that that does not include a couple times that I filled the boat up uh, using my personal credit card, not my, not my business credit card. I have segregated bank account and credit card account for the business. 
Um, and I try as best I can to, you know, keep everything perfectly segregated. And again, I'll explain why it's so critical to do this correctly by the books and to show a profit at the end. Um, but in the first instance, I did pay a couple times because those of you who do watch the channel know that I've, you know, maybe 10% of my trips are personal trips where I don't have a charter scheduled. I'm usually not running far. I don't think I took the boat personally to Block Island or Montauk. They're usually local striper or fluke runs. But nonetheless, I felt it was important in case I ever did get audited to, you know, to be able to demonstrate to the IRS that I, I keep those things segregated. Now, having said all that, what killed me this year, the profit would have been higher, was obviously the cost of gas. The, the, the price of gas started going crazy at the beginning of the year. It did not slow down till right around the time I pulled the boat. Um, and I was paying the least I paid, right? Because I had Merc 350 Verados, the inline sixes. They require 91 to run at full power. You can put 89 in, but they detune to 300 horsepower each. Um, my local marina, there's one marina that has 93 octane. The cheapest I paid was $5.49 a gallon. The most I was paying, I believe, was uh, six and change. And I have twin 150-gallon gas tanks, 300 gallons. So there you go. That's how, uh, you know, 14000 plus in gas bills, uh, you know, hit you. It just, it just happens. But I was very happy with the year. Uh, obviously, anytime you have a profit, it's good. I do have a full-time job. Like I said, that's that's really how I uh, subside. I, I, I still don't understand how guys who do the, the chartering full-time are able to really scratch out any kind of decent living. Um, but I, I, I don't want to editorialize or digress. Let's focus on this. And let's get to the point now of why, for me, it was important to show a profit. And that basically has to deal with the fact that the IRS really views part-time charter businesses, whether it's luxury boat charters, fishing charters, anything dealing with your boat, it truly has to be a business and can't be used subsidizing a hobby. Um, and there's a lot of case law out there where the IRS has really come down hard on folks who are you know, showing big losses related to their four business boats um, while earning a second income as something else. And that's not what I want to happen. This truly is a business for me. Yes, I do use it uh, for recreational purposes as well. It's very limited. And I, like I said, I try to cover those costs. I have the receipts if, if I were ever audited, evidencing that I did, uh, you know, actually buy the gas for those trips that I did myself. Uh, so just an important lesson to anyone out there who wants to start a part-time charter business and they have a full-time job, be very wary of the fact that you will need to, yeah, you can show a loss your first couple of years. I think it's two out of the first three years my accountant told me it's okay to show a loss. I've only shown loss my first year. After that, you're really running the danger of the IRS coming down on you and claiming that, look, all you're doing is using your business uh, or, or subsidizing your hobby by claiming it's a business. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, happy holidays to all. Um, as always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.